Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me at the back? Is that okay? I have to say, I've just looked at my Fitbit and my heart rate is really, really fast. All that jumping up and down. So I definitely needed a little drink just before we start. I'm sure everybody will have experienced just a touch from the Lord this morning. Because he's here and he is good and he is faithful. I think that's really what I want to major on mostly is the faithfulness of God and who God is to me and how he has been in my life. Many of you know me and some of you may have heard a little bit of my story about how I came to know the Lord but I just felt for this morning that it would be good just to bring that to you. Now I've been a Christian since 1991 that's 32 years. Now, I was not brought up in a Christian home. I was born and brought up in the science. But my mum actually sent us as, to church. She was not a believer, neither was my father. But she sent me, my brother and sister, to the local parish church from time to time. And I think it was really there that I, I had a sense, I had a God consciousness. Now, I want to take you back to me being age seven, quite a long time ago, and I was actually here in Resanth Baptist Church. Now, I had seen a, an advert, I think it was in the chippy, saying, do you want to find out more about Jesus? But the thing that really drew me was, it said, free juice and biscuits. Now, we grew up really quite hard up. We didn't have juice and biscuits in our homes, so I thought, I'm going to go and I'm going to find out about Jesus, but also let's have the juice and biscuits. So, my memory of it, as I say, as a seven-year-old, was being asked at the end of this week, would anybody like to be baptised? And as a seven-year-old, I thought, yeah, I want to be baptised. We needed our parents' permission, because obviously we were youngsters. My mum gave permission, and I have such a strong memory of that experience here. The baptismal pool is behind me. Now, I stood with a little turquoise swimsuit on, and I remember going under the water and coming up and thinking, what happened? It was, to this day, the most spiritual experience I've had. I can only say I experienced what I would say is sheer and utter bliss. I felt like I had been transported somewhere. I felt as though time had stood still. So I get up from the waters as a seven year old and go, what happened? You would think at that stage I would follow through with the Lord, but I didn't. It doesn't always work that way. I wasn't encouraged by my family to go to church, but God, I believe, had his hand on me at that point. That was when he said, you are mine. So, let me just think. I'm going to fast forward quite a bit. Even as a child, I did go across the road to Methodist Church, probably until about the age of 12. So I did have some understanding of um, what I would say. I went to Sunday school, I was in the drama group, I did uh, pantomimes. But then I'm fast forwarding because at 16, I left school and I started working. And I completely went away from anything to do with church. As probably, sadly, some teenagers do, not all. I then met my then husband and I was married at the age of 22, across in the Methodist church. Now, four years later, I became pregnant and I was longing to be pregnant. Sadly, I have to say, it was a very difficult pregnancy. Um, I was quite ill throughout it. And the upshot of that was, was that I had a son who was stillborn. Now, it was a very traumatic time in my life because I had been in the hospital for two weeks, unable really to move. And I remember the night before my son actually died, praying in the way that I knew. And I remember just saying, Lord, I can't take this anymore. Please make it go one way or the other. Now, unknown to me, that was the night that my baby Michael died. Now, the next day, my brother turns up at my door, my bedside, and I think, what are you doing here? He turned up because his wife, Avril, who was pregnant with twins, 
had just given birth to twin baby boys. So you're probably getting this, this story here. The day I lost my son, I had twin nephews born on the same day, the same hospital. Quite a difficult time. Now, when I was told my baby had died, I was told I had to have labour. So my first thought was, where is my baby going? Now, not physically, but spiritually. And I thought, I need to speak to a minister. So I phoned the Methodist church, four years after ever being there, and he came up and he spoke with me. And he said, whenever your baby is born, get the hospital to phone, and I will come and pray. And bless him, that's what he did. I had a 36-hour labour. Michael was born, and he came at 20 past 12. I mean, he was born at 20 past 1 in the morning on Sunday, which is really significant to think that this minister came and prayed with me. So, let's just move on a little bit. From there, I still didn't get involved with church. I still had all my questions. I got pregnant again with Stephanie, who's actually at the back today to surprise me coming, which is such a, such a blessing. And since I've had Steph, I've also had Becky as well. And I'm blessed to be a grandma of four girls. So God is good, God is faithful. But when Steph was a little bit, maybe a few months old, I thought, you know, I need to do the dumb thing and have my baby christened, which is what I thought. I didn't have the understanding about baptism and the difference. So I phoned the Methodist church expecting to get John Johnson, who was a minister, and he said, no, it was Malcolm True, a new minister, and suggested that I come to church first, which is what I did. This is the next part of my story. Now, I was not really following the Lord at this stage. I had an understanding of who he was. I met a lady or a girl called Julie, another Julie, and she was so different. And I thought, what is it about you? And it turned out she was born again. And I said, born again? Born again Christian. Now, I'm not judging anyone, but I, what I would say is what I saw in the Methodist was perhaps a lot of maybe just regular church goers, whereas with Julie, she, the fruit of the Spirit, just shone from her and I was so attracted to this. So as I say, I always knew that I wanted to and I needed to give my life to the Lord and to surrender to him. But something held me back. And I think it was I always felt I was never good enough. I always looked at this Julie and other Christians and I thought, I can never be like that. I, I can't, you know, it was just too much. And I want to say today, that is a lie, a big fat lie from the enemy. So anybody that's, you know, not with the Lord and thinks, I've got to chase me, I've got to get all right before him, it's not true. He takes you as you are, that is when the transformation then happens. So, I also knew that when I did this, for me, it was going to be 100%, 100% commitment. Now, Billy Graham, for some people may know, a very prominent evangelistic person from America, was coming to Edinburgh, a big event, and I thought, that's where I would like to give my life to the Lord. Now, I knew that I could give my life to the Lord anywhere, in my bed, in the shower, in the car, but for me, I think I was building it up, and I just wanted, I thought, that's where it's going to be. However, I had a lot of questions. And there may be some people here today who have got a lot of questions. And I chose to write those questions down. Two pages of what I'm going to say, full scrap paper that shows you my age. <laughs> Not A4, full scrap. And I thought, I'm going to go on the Tuesday before the Saturday and meet this girl, Julie, at what was then a mum and talks group at Methodist and ask her these questions. So I went, so disappointed she wasn't there. So in my way, I said, okay, Lord, if this is so presumptuous, if you want me, you need to get these questions answered before Saturday. That was what prayer I put up there. Now, that very night, and this is again why I'm saying the faithfulness of God, that very night, my doorbell went, and it was a minister at my front door. Never been at the house before. My then husband was a motor mechanic, 
minister's car had broken down and basically what he said is, can I get the car fixed? I explained he's not here. We didn't have mobile phones back then, so it was coming in weak. My heart was going a lot faster than it was when I finished dancing here <laughs> because I knew that my prayer had been answered and I also knew then that I had to have the boldness to ask these questions. So we spoke about everything and nothing until he said, I have to go now. And I thought, this is your opportunity. So I, I stopped and said, can I ask you some questions? As you can imagine, a long time went by. He answered lots of questions. Some of them were, I'd love to know what they were, but there were questions like, did Judas Iscariot ever have a, a, you know, any opportunity to not do what he did? Was that just predestined? Sorry, my time is up, but I'm going to just finish what I was going to say. Um, you know, why was there, why did God allow Satan? Big questions, but there was lots of other questions too. And in my mind, I felt I needed all these questions answered before I could say yes. Now, what he then said to me, and again, I want you to hold on to this, anyone who's listening now or listening later, because it was so wise. He said, Julie, when I was at university, I had the same questions and I spoke to someone. And this person said to me, Malcolm, you may never get all your questions answered. What you need is to take a step of faith. The questions will then either be answered or they will become not as important as you follow the Lord and get to know who he is. So in that moment, I thought, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. Now, you again, he went off without his car fix, I have to say, but the Lord had engineered that. This was on the Tuesday. So on the Saturday, I am saying, I am going to go forward. I got so excited about it. Again, you don't need to go to a Billy Graham. I could have said yes there and then, but I built this up. So I go on the Saturday. I knew I was going to say yes. When the altar call came, I went forward. I prayed the prayer of salvation. And I felt nothing. And I was so disappointed. Honestly, I can't tell you how disappointed I was because of the experience I've had as a seven-year-old. I expected flashing lights and symbols and everything that went with it. So I just stood there and I thought, okay, I've done that. So what was all that about? Went home, <coughs> disappointed. I went to church the next day, across to the Methodist with Steph. And all I can say is, from the moment church started, we said the Lord's Prayer. We've been going over that. We said the Lord's Prayer, which I had said a thousand times in my life. And I suddenly understood it. I knew what it meant. Scripture leapt out at me. We sang a hymn and the tears just ran down my face. And I knew I was born again. And I knew that the Lord had opened my spiritual eyes and my heart as I surrendered to him. So, I could tell you lots more about what happened from then until here, but we don't have time for that today. Um, it may be that we share again, but if anybody does want to ask what happens between then and you are here now, I think all I really wanted to say is, God is faithful. If I think back to when I was seven years here, I don't think if somebody had said to me, now, 46 years later, you'll come back in here and you'll be given your testimony and it'll be one year from the date that your husband started to pastor this very church with me supporting up by his side. So I just want to say God is faithful, God is true, and he is for each and every one of us.